you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before moving on. In order to undergo a titration of this number of grams of iodine and convert that into a volume of the other substance, it's going to be helpful to take a look at a sort of road map. And here is that road map. We're going to begin with the grams of iodine and convert that into the moles of iodine. And of course, to convert grams of a substance into its corresponding number of moles, we'll be using the molar mass. And then from moles of iodine to moles of this Na2S2O3, we'll be using the coefficients from the balanced reaction. After we have the moles of our target substance, we'll convert it into the liters simply by using the molarity. And then once we have the liters, we can get it into milliliters by just using a standard unit conversion. So let's begin with the grams of iodine, which is given as 2.474. And if you'd like to, you can place this over a 1. And then whenever we do a conversion, what we'll keep in mind is that whatever the unit of this quantity is, we're going to be carrying that unit down to the denominator of our conversion factor. So in other words, if we have grams of I2 here, we're going to be placing grams of I2 in the denominator. As we stated, we can convert grams into moles by using the molar mass. And to do that, we'll need our periodic tables. We can see that iodine has a molar mass of 126.9 grams per mole, but of course, since the formula contains two iodines, we'll have to multiply that value by two. So when you do that, you get 253.81, approximately, grams of iodine, and that will be present in one mole of iodine. So the grams are going to cancel out, and that gives us the moles of iodine at this point in the conversion. Next, from our roadmap, we will convert the moles of iodine into the moles of our target substance. And we do that by looking at the coefficients in the balanced reaction. So here is the iodine, and then our target substance is right here. And we can see that one mole of iodine will react with two moles of S2O3. And of course, S2O3 is the ion right here that's present in our target substance. So again, one mole of iodine will react with two moles of our target substance. Let's keep in mind that if you have moles of I2 in your numerator, then in the next conversion factor, you're going to put moles of I2 in the denominator, similar to how we did that before. So we'll put moles of I2 here, and then we'll put moles of our target substance here. And again, one mole reacted with two moles of that target substance. So we can next move from moles of our target into liters of our target. And we noted that you can use the molarity for doing that. And the molarity is given to us as 0.285 molar. Now let's recall that that is equivalent to 0.285 moles per liter. And we can write that in our conversion as follows. So the moles are going to be present in the denominator of that conversion. So we'll have 0.285 moles of our target substance. And that will be present in one liter of our target substance. Finally, since we have our unit currently in liters, but the question asks for milliliters, we simply need a unit conversion. And we recall that one milliliter is equivalent to 10 to the negative three liters. So looking at all of our units, the moles of iodine will cancel out in blue, the moles of our target substance will cancel out in yellow, and then the liters of our target substance will cancel out, and that's gonna leave us with milliliters. The final step, of course, is to pick up our calculators and quantify this final answer. And when we do that, we should obtain approximately 68.4 milliliters of our target substance. And that completes the answer to this problem.